Thanks for taking my question. Um, General Petraeus, in his new role, has a very difficult situation now in the center of the situation in Benghazi. Do you have any comment? Well, um, just to create some context for those in the room, um, as you know, the uh, ambassador in Benghazi was killed along with a couple of, um, of security agents who happened to be CIA uh, security paramilitary forces. That, that just came out today in, in Fox News. But um, the challenge has been the fog of war. And the greater challenge is that it's political hunting season, and so this whole thing has been turned into a very political sort of uh, arena, if you will. Um, but the facts that came out today were that the ground forces there at the CIA annex, which is different from the consulate, were requesting reinforcements. They were, they were requesting the, it's called the Sinks in Extreme, Extremist Force. A group of Delta Force operators are very, most talented guys we have in the military. They could, have, they could have come and reinforced the consulate and the CIA annex that were under attack. Now, I don't know if a lot of you heard this, but the CIA annex had actually um, had taken a couple of Libyan militia members prisoner, and, and they think that the attack on the consulate was an effort to try to get these prisoners back. So that, that's still being vetted. The challenging thing for General Petraeus is that in his new position, he's not allowed to communicate with the press. So he's known all of this. They had correspondence with um, the CIA station chief in, in Libya. Uh, within 24 hours, they kind of knew what was happening. But if you remember at the time, the, the Muslim video, uh, the Mohammed video that came out, the demonstrations that were going on in Cairo, there were demonstrations in 22 other countries around the world, tens of thousands of people. And our government was very concerned that this was going to become a nightmare for us. So you can understand if you put yourself in his shoes or Secretary Clinton's shoes or the President's shoes that we thought it was tied somehow to the demonstrations in Cairo. And it's true that we have signal intelligence that shows the, um, the militia members in Libya were watching the demonstration in Cairo and it did sort of galvanize their effort. Um, so we'll, we'll find out the facts soon enough. As a former intel officer, it's frustrating to me because it reveals our sources and methods. I don't think the public necessarily needs to know all of that. Um, it is a tragedy that we lost an ambassador and, and two other government officials. Um, and something, there was a failure in the system because there was additional security re requested. But, um, but it's frustrating to see the sort of political aspect of, of what's going on with this whole investigation. Um, so the, the most recent news that came out was a Fox report by Jennifer Griffin. I got it on a distribution list I'm on, and, and uh, it has some pretty insightful stuff in it, if you want to look for it. Hi. I'm, I'm just, um, I just want your opinion, actually, on... Um, you know, there's this all this media attention not too long ago about the sexual assaults and the cover-up of the armed sources for women. Being the mother of a young girl, um, I, I'd be hard-pressed to encourage her to into the armed forces. Um, what's your opinion about what does the armed services have to do to protect our young women? Mm -hmm. Well, um, that is a, a tough issue that the military is dealing with right now, and it's wonderful that this documentary called The Invisible War has just come out, and it's an expose on the number of women that have been raped or sexually abused in the military. It's uh, about 19,000, and we think that's only a third of the cases. So that's really a tragedy and um, an epidemic. It's, it's critical. I'm thankful to say I've never had an incident in my career. I've never had any kind of sexual harassment. I'm grateful for the martial arts training I've had and, and also <laughs> um, sniper training. So maybe part of that, you know, I have a deterrent mechanism. But a lot of our young women don't. And so we've got to, we've got to help them. The big challenge is that in the military, if you have some kind of sexual harassment or abuse, you report it through your chain of command. Well, what if it's your boss, your squad leader, or your company commander who's just conducted this egregious behavior? Um, it's not fair to the woman or man, frankly. There are a lot of men that are raped in the military, too. It's not insignificant. Um, so what the military has done is try to take the investigation mechanism outside of a unit um, and create all these hotlines. And we've had these for a while, but you have to educate the troops on, on how they can seek help and so forth. 
So this brings the larger question of should women be in combat, where you're in an even more hostile, austere environment, and rather isolated, if you will. Um, women are in combat, and our ground combat exclusion policy is anachronistic. Uh, thankfully, DOD overturned a couple of policies earlier this year in January and opened up 14,000 more positions for women, but there are still 250,000 that women are excluded from. But do you feel like uh, women should have the equal opportunity? You have a daughter. Of course you want her to have great opportunities. But should they have the opportunity, if they're physically fit and mentally agile and so forth, to, to, do, to be all they can be? There's a lot of discussion about this in, in the military right now. I'm a huge advocate for women's opportunities. Um, having served in the special forces community and, uh, and, and uh, seen women perform on many different levels, I think it comes down to leadership. Uh, the leaders in every unit, whether it's a squad, platoon, company, battalion, brigade, have to set the right tone. And if a commander sets the right tone, then abuse will not be tolerated. If a commander sets the right tone, then women can be integrated and can fully have all of those opportunities. But you have to have the right leadership example there. Are we done or one more? Okay. <laughs> They're cutting me off. So, all right. Thank you. <laughs>